Today I'm in the enormous Bell Equipment Factory, where they make trucks and tractors and all sorts of other rugged machines. We're going to have a look at the way in which they make the triwheeler machine, which is a versatile little machine that can be used for sugarcane operations or in the timber industry to move logs or as a forklift vehicle to move things around or for over 15 other derivatives. The frame of the triwheeler is made almost entirely of steel plates and structural tubing. Here, steel plates of various size and thickness are brought into the factory by trucks and are moved around by these massive cranes. The first process is to cut the metal into the multitude of shapes. Plate up to 12 mm in thickness is plasma cut in the material preparation section. Secondary processes such as bending or drilling or chamfering or tapping threads are also done here. The plasma cutting machines that are used here are very accurate, cutting to an accuracy of 1 mm. Other plate is laser cut, also on a computer controlled cutting machine, with accuracy of 0.2 of a millimeter. The various raw parts are made according to a drawing that has been designed by an engineer. Some of the metal parts are powder coated to provide a hard, very tough and corrosion resistant surface. In the first step of powder coating, each piece of metal passes through an acid bath to remove all dirt, oil and rust and to etch the metal to enable the powder to adhere to the surface. Next, the metal parts pass through a spraying tunnel where they are spray coated with powder. In the third step, each piece passes through a furnace where the powder is baked onto the part. Once they have been made, the tanks and frames and brackets are taken to the fabrication section. Here they are put into a jig which places them accurately and a boiler maker tacks them into place with small welds. Using a jig ensures that each part is placed exactly in the right place. You can imagine how much work there'd be to fix a piece that's been welded out of position by a couple of millimeters. The jig takes this possibility out of play. The tack weld is followed by the final weld, which is very accurately done according to strict specifications. Each weld has a specific number of weld runs per weld to ensure a strong joint. Welding is always done from above so that the molten metal falls into the gap between the two pieces of metal. This welding manipulator can be rotated to allow each section to be reached from above by the boiler maker. Robotic machines are also used in the factory to produce very precise welds that are exactly the same each time a weld is made. Once each section is complete, it's placed into another jig where the completed frame of the machine is fabricated. The sections are welded together and now we can see the machine shape starting to appear. Once the frame is complete, the three-wheeler is sandblasted to prepare the surface and painted with a primer paint. This is the pre-paint assembly process, where the hydraulic wheel drives, boom, cylinders and tail wheel are bolted onto the frame. A semi-assembled rolling chassis is now ready to go to the paint shop. The machine is now ready for painting and a top coat is applied. Bell used two colors, a yellow and a gray. By working in this way it becomes easier to order paint and only two spray guns are needed to do the job. The more colors that are needed, the more complexity there is in the paint shop. The engine used in the three-wheeler is a 3.3 liter Yanmar diesel, which provides the quick and punchy performance that this machine is famous for. The engine powers three hydraulic pumps. One pump is used to power each wheel and the last pump is used for the boom or for the grab or forklift functions. This eliminates drive shafts and gearboxes and other parts making it a much simpler system with less to break down in the field. Each wheel is controlled individually by two foot pedals so it's quite a skill to learn driving with no steering wheel. The cylinders and other drive parts are also made in the factory. Here the rods of the boom cylinder, which is mounted on top of the machine to raise and lower the boom, is friction welded. During friction welding the metal melts to create a perfect fusion of the parts. 
the grab is assembled, with huge chrome-plated pins being used to link everything together. Once the grab body is complete, the rotator, which allows the grab to spin, is bolted into position. Smaller piston cylinders that will control various other functions in the three-wheeler are assembled by hand. The seat and other cabin parts and controls, as well as the electrical system, are fitted into place. The tri-wheeler uses huge tires which are 1,4 meters high. The tires are air-filled and are very rugged to handle rough ground with ease. The machine is started and brought up to running temperature and an initial check is done to ensure that the hydraulic and electrical systems are operating correctly. If the tri-wheeler passes the test it runs for five hours to be certain that the machine is perfect. These machines are guaranteed and are shipped all over the world, so being sure that everything is working perfectly at this stage is much cheaper than having to send an engineer halfway around the world to fix a problem in the field. Mm -hmm.